BRB UK. Worst teeth, better accents. Hello, hello, and indeed, ahoy, hoy. Good news, Coleman's better. Bad news, it means he's put more time into making his soundboard even more annoying. I'm Dan, I'm one of your hosts. This is BRB UK. Welcome one and all. Good day, good evening, good afternoon, good early hours of the morning. Gragadi, gragadado. Uh, there's Coleman down there. Say hello, Coleman. Hi! There's a Tim over there. Say hello, Tim. And put hello, your drink Tim. down. How are, we, how, how are we all doing, chaps? Fine, good. I guess. Uh, if you don't watch this show live, you don't get to hear the cool special custom intros that we make just for the live shows. Uh, and by cool together. special intros, he means pressing a key repeatedly. Dad! On his uh, yes, that one Usually on that his one. soundboard. <laughs> no, I put that together. I put it together like two minutes before we started uh, the live stream. I was watching. I was frantically watching the clock, going quick, 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 quick. You know, you know, you like that uh, that, that episode. You know when Ross, out of Friends, tries to introduce people to his sounds with the keyboard. Yeah, with the yeah, keyboard. Yeah, yeah. That's you. That's yeah, you. Yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. There's another nineties. There's another nineties saying for you. If you're in the yeah, pre-show, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're trying to come up with nineties saying. That's you. That Jungle. is. Yeah. It's a good All one. right. Oh, I just punched my mic. Apologies. All right. Let's do, let's do a podcast where we talk about video games and the like. Hey, do you know what the even better news is? No. I've, I'm scrolling down the agenda. Coleman, two games. Yes. Me, one two game, games. which doesn't really count because it's, I talked about it last week. But Tim. Dun, 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 dun. No games. No games. God. That's why they call him No Games Hibs. Half yeah. an hour show today, you hear that? Yeah, huh? That's what it's going to be. Absolutely, but there's been a, there's been a smattering of stuff going on in the news, so there will be stuff to talk about, I'm sure. Um, Col- Coleman, I Why? wish to hear about your Dragon Ball spanking zero, spark, sparking zero, not spanking zero. Dragon Ball sparking zero, spanking which- zero. Thank you to Kev, our Discord, because I forgot this game was coming out, and I got all super excited when I remembered and uh, got straight into this. If you do not know, this I game is know. part of an existing series. Is this game part of an existing series? Yes, this is Dragon... So the original series was called Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenchi. I can never remember Catchy. what the last word was. It's, I always said Budokai Tenchi when I was a kid, and then I realized it's like Tenchi or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I've, been, I've been saying it wrong for years. Uh, anyway. And continue to do so to this day, I'm sure. And to this day, yes. Uh, I learned just before we started recording and instantly forgot because I started making Dan intros. And then, uh, but over in Japan, it had a completely different name. It was called Dragon Ball Sparking. And uh, they've kind of incorporated that name for the return of the series because this is a series that existed on the PlayStation 2. And, right. uh, and on the Wii. And I don't, I think we might have got like a HD port on the, the, the PS3, maybe. Um, but f- from that point, we haven't got a new version of this game for quite some time. We've had uh, a beat em up, and then we've had all the, the, the Xenoverse games that were like MMOs, and we had a weird arcade port that I didn't like. And, and then we had Fighters, which did very, very well uh, because of Evo, because it was more and, of a straight and- fighting type game. And flagrant use of the letter Z, because as we all know, that makes stuff cool. It does. And X makes the everything extreme, as it we does. remember, from the 90s. Ooh. Like Chew It's Extreme. That's you, that is. Remember them? Good. I do. Good. Good. Good, Good stop uh, anyway, motion advert. This... Anyway, I digress. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Well, that was, the re- that was the regular Chew It's. Chew It's Extreme. They had like a fizzy thing in the middle. Mm. And oh, bigger, mate, you're right. I forgot all about those. They were awesome. Anyway, yes. anyway, back to Dragon Anywho. Ball. Uh, so this is a return to a uh, previous form that they used to use in the game where it would be more like an arena fighter, a uh, large open area, you play in third person, and you can go in for the, the, the close-up attacks, you can fly, you can maneuver around and do the a lot of the kind of Dragon Ball moves that you might be used to seeing, like uh, your, your Kamehameha's and your, your uh, Deathly Discs your and, and your Gallic Gun. And uh, Kai blasts, all those kind of things. Oh, I and do then love a Kai like, blast. Yes, and uh, the the idea is to either uh, attack close, fly, evade, use the environment to your advantage, hide, charge up, and attack. And it is excellent. And this is selling very well. Uh, 
I don't know how. Oh, I don't because I think we've spoken about Dragon Ball games before on the show. I can never remember how are your two knowledge of the Dragon Ball series because I'm ve- terrible. Yeah, I'm aware Good. it exists. Okay. Me too. <laughs> I'm a I'm a very lapsed fan. Like I've seen Dragon Ball as a child. I've seen Dragon Ball Z as an older child. I did not. And uh, then uh, I. I haven't watched like I've seen some of the films. I haven't watched Super. I haven't. I've seen like half a saga on GT. I, I've missed a lot of it. But isn't there like a billion do, episodes to catch up on now as well? So feels a bit impenetrable. Are there like kind as, of like alternate universes and realities to get your head around? As I wouldn't. Well? I wouldn't say they're impenetrable because uh, they've done quite a good job to because the the first one is uh, Dragon Ball is basically just Journey to the West, but they've gone absolutely bonkers with it. When they get to Dragon Ball Z, they went, okay, now they're all superheroes. That's that's what we're doing. Everyone can fly. Everyone's got superpowers. It's, it's pretty cool. But over the years, they've done so many re-releases of it. They've actually made like, um, I think it's called Dragon Ball Kai, which is uh, a more abridged version where they take a lot of the filler episodes out. And if there's a character charging up for a, a, a super powerful move that it doesn't take five episodes for them to charge only to miss you know that nice. kind of stuff they've shortened a lot of that stuff down which is a good way to do a rewatch uh, i will admit and then you've got the movies i i think it's now is an, a better time to get into it than ever and also you've got games like this where they just retell the story of of the tv shows and the movies and stuff and that was kind of what got me back into dragon ball z when the the first of these games had come out um, because I'd seen bits here and there, but hadn't really, like, didn't really know the lore. And then through playing the games, it's retelling the story of Dragon Ball Z and then frozen, like, for bonus modes, a couple of movies and Dragon Ball fights and stuff like that. And I kind of got the gist of it from there and then got interested and went back to it. This does pretty much the same. And I was a little bit disappointed at first because when I was playing through the episode modes, um, it skips over a lot when you're doing the, the initial saga, the Saiyan saga. And I thought, oh, uh, the old games had way more stuff. And we're, we're kind of glossing over that here. And I thought it was just because they've got more to cover now that there are more series that are involved. But it's also they've done like a cool thing where it, traditionally, uh, so like your first fight against uh, a character called Raditz, who's a Saiyan who just appears and, and you have to go fight him. And there's a way that plays out in the cartoon. But you can change the path and go a completely different way and then alter the story uh sometimes following on the same beats just in different ways and sometimes changing completely and that stuff is probably why they've skipped over some of the fighting and just put it down to cutscene instead and i actually really like that because it just means you're not treading over the same thing again and again it adds a lot more life to it um i've not played a huge amount of this because there is a lot to explore Okay. And I'm just focusing on the uh, the episodic modes at the moment. But I've seen a lot of things online where, because, uh, I, 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 sorry, to get into Tim territory for a moment, the menu as you hey! start this game <laughs> is brilliant. Um, it's it's like the most san- fan servicey mo- uh, menu I've ever seen in any video game. You start this game up and Goku drops down from the sky and he's surrounded by his friends in this area and then you go to the next menu and he'll fly off or instant tra- transmission to like King Kai's place or uh, off to see Chi Chi or Kame house or uh, you know, all these different characters or uh, uh, Mr. Satan's house and it's really funny and then there's all little sub menus within menus and, and they all do different things and I love that I was I spent probably the first hour of this game just playing around the menus to see what was available and all the different transitions and stuff. It was That's really worse cool. worse than me, Colin. I really liked no, it. No, it's um, not. <laughs> it's and not. then, uh, yeah, so there's lots of things like there's an encyclopedia mode of all the characters and things like databanks of all the characters and then storage of the uh, all the, the movies and things you can unlock within the game. And then there's like tournament modes, which are always a, a great thing within this game. Then there's online play and uh, all, all fun stuff for you to be playing around with, but um, yeah, solely I I go for these for the the uh, episode modes, and then I start getting more hardcore into the game. Um, I saw a lot of people kind of memeing on the there's a there's a character that can turn into a gigantic ape, and a lot of people saying that it's it's where the learning curve just falls off a cliff because it becomes so super hard at that point. 
And I thought, huh, just like the PS2 game, because that's exactly what happened to me back in the day. Oh. And then when I was, I got to that point and I beat him in one go and I went, oh, I must be really good at this game because I've, I, I, I haven't changed the, uh, the difficulty lower or anything like that. I just got through him on one hit. I'm very happy with myself. Then when I started doing the alternate path line and my character hasn't gone through the same path, so he's not as powerful, that's when it got much harder to fight yeah. the ape. So that might be what everyone was talking about online. Um, so that was very funny. Uh, this is a, a very enjoyable game. It's going to be clearly one for Dragon Ball fans because it's so heavy in the the lore and the characters and the fan service and stuff. Um, it, so much so, like again, there's an entirely new series that I don't know anything about. That there's all these new characters that are thrown in that I have no idea what they are or what they do, um, which is, is very amusing to me. Or ones that I know to be like one way and now they're a completely different way. It's, that's quite amusing as well. Uh, but also, this isn't if you're like a big fan of fighting games in general, this might not be for you because okay. it's not like a competitive fighter where you've just got the one on one or the three on three or whatever you, you you know you're doing online. Uh, because of the nature of the style of games, if there is a specifically underpowered level uh, level character or an overly powerful character in the movie in the TV shows then they're going to reflect that way in the game. It is right, purely okay. a fan service game. So it's not really balanced so between the... characters then, sort of thing. No, it's not like when we were playing um, Dragon Ball Fighters, and you could just kind of, like, if you set it up the right way, you could cheese that game. And it got to a point where I had to stop, and I was just laughing my ass off as me and Tim were playing, because I didn't know what was happening. There's just all these flashing lights and explosions and things going on, because you're all contained on one single screen. This time, because there's a larger environment, it... it kind of makes that stuff a bit more uh, palatable for playing as uh, one player. Um, it's still, it, it does have a, a, a local uh, uh, local two-player mode, which is great because it's exactly as I remembered it. Really bad. It's got terrible okay. split screen in this game. Oh. <laughs> okay, here's so, an open environment. Have a split screen. No, right, because right. I mean, you've both got to have a different viewpoint, basically. Yeah. 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 So, so in terms of then kind of who it's really targeting, is this really for people who are hardcore Dragon Ball or want to relive their hardcore days of being a Dragon Ball Z fan. I think so. Uh, I right. think so. If you're a big fan of Dragon Ball in any way, shape or form, then this is going to be a game for you. Uh, I I would say if you're more into fighting games and you want like something with this aesthetic, then Dragon Ball Fighters is going to be okay. the game for you. And plus that, that game regularly goes on sale uh, in different formats. I think I got it on Switch for like a fiver. It doesn't look like the actual gameplay is that different from a fighting game though no like it looks like you can take off and go in like fly up into the environment but it still looks like it's on a a slightly isometric plane of of just being what a one-on-one -on -one fire how is it mechanically different other than being because yeah well characters. what they like to do with these op they, they, they've done this with a fair few um kind of anime style fighting games when they when they put them in 3d uh like killer kill was one i remember off the top of my head they it's it's because it's a larger environment an open environment so for instance if you're per playing against like a super powerful character you have that ability to kind of hide a, a behind a piece of environment and then fly at okay. them attack them go back, recharge, come back at them with a more powerful move. Um, it's also like big destructible environments as well. You'll, you can find like a big mountain cavernous kind of area and then you'll be behind a mountain and all of a sudden the mountain explodes because Vegeta's fired his Gallic gun at you and, and just blown everything up around you. <laughs> that stuff's pretty fun as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good game. And it's got a massive roster of characters, even though I think 20 billion of them are different variations of Goku. It has a massive <laughs> roster of characters uh, from the various series uh, over the years. But also it's got characters that, get this right, you unlock by <gasps> playing the game. What? I know. Oh. You didn't pay How, for them. What? You just you, Yeah. What am I going to do with the big wad of money I have next to me to throw at the screen, Coleman? <laughs> How am I going to deal with that? I'm sure there's like different yeah, versions of the game you can pay buy for, for costumes. More money and... Am I going to have to buy Destiny 2 for the 15th time? <laughs> yes. I'm sure there will be I'm sure there will be DLC down the road at some point, but yeah, a lot of, this has a lot of characters to unlock and it's really cool as well cuz like there's characters you unlock by just playing the story uh, of the game. 
And then there's challenge modes that you do to unlock Dragon Balls. And if you collect enough Dragon Balls, you can summon one of the many dragons, uh, Shenron being the one I remember, and get him to I grant have a your wish. Yes. Do you also summon their balls? Or is it just the dragons no, you use, summer? You use the balls to summon the dragon. Dan, dragons don't got the balls. They're no, just why not? Like there's got to be man dragons and lady dragons. <laughs> big serpent creature. I think they're asexual. Like, uh, no, like serpents definitely Park. have to. It's just difficult to tell. They have a they're part, They were made with frog DNA, Dan. They're whatever no, that's they Jurassic Park. No, that's Jurassic Park. That's not Dragon Ball Z. They're not dragons. <laughs> they're dinosaurs. That's the point. I've never seen a dragon in Dragon Ball. Are there actual dragons? Yeah, there are dragons. Okay. Um, that, uh, the the name Dragon Ball is you you collect these. Uh, they're like orange balls called dragons with stars inside them. And okay. then when you've collected all of them, you can summon a dragon, and that yeah. dragon will grant you one wish. That's the whole point of Dragon Ball. They're always okay. trying to get the Dragon Balls to summon a wish. Dra- uh, summon dragons. the dragon collect to make all a wish. the dragons. Yes, but in this case, you are summoning the dragon to make a wish, and the wish would be to get one of the like hidden characters. Which is cool. I wish for a good dragon. Game. Really good game. But uh, I have I a really question for you. This. I have a question for Carmen. Yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. And this yeah. may be a little bit difficult. But if, because I hear that kind of at Dragon Ball Fighters or Fighters Z, if you're me, at its core is a mechanically, a really mechanically sound fighting game with a lot of nuance. Oh, yes. Very snug. Whereas this. Is if you stripped away the Dragon Ball trappings, is there still a good game under, or is it really purely fan service? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <clears throat> Coleman. That's difficult. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I asked the questions, Coleman. It might be like a. I, now you said it, I've never thought about it. Maybe it's like a miso game where they go, um, you know the. You've got Dynasty Warriors, and then you strip off Dynasty Warriors, and you stick in Zelda or Persona or one of those kind of things. And it's like, is the game good, or do you just like the thing that's on the game? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's one of those. That's why I've played different anime games that are like this. But that's like, I think you asked a similar question about uh, Star Wars Outlaws, and I yes. think that isn't the same game without existing in the Star Wars universe, which is part of the appeal, which is it's kind a of this one, as well. It? No? Like, it's not the same without Dragon Ball, even though you could possibly substitute something in that, you know, that might kind but of But the make mechanics it... of the game, yeah. is there a solid kind of mechanical underpinning uh, of this? If it, if, in, the uh, underca- uh, in the undercarriage, where the Dragon Balls would be, is there a solid structure to replace lack of said... <sighs> Dragon. I'm gonna get back to you another day on this because that's look at him. I've crashed. Mind. I've crashed. You have. Coleman. You've actually broken me. He's, uh, he's I, got I the spinning beach ball. Is is going on his forehead with, at the I, moment? I disagree with Tim when it comes to the Star Wars Outlaws game. I think if I was playing generic space uh, a Hispanic Canadian woman um, on adventures with little lizard, yeah, I'd still, still enjoy fun. that game a lot. Yeah, I like Not the as mechanics catchy a of title, that game. Though, is it? No, I mean I'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Space Hispanic Canadian lady and a pet lizard. Yes. Adventures. Speaking of buying it, uh, right. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is available now. It's on PC, the Xbox Series X and S, on PlayStation Five, and you can get it. Uh, retails at fifty four ninety nine to sixty nine ninety nine. Mm. Uh, although I I bought it physically, and I think I paid. What did I pay? I paid do 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 forty pounds. Look at Ooh. that. Or thirty nine ninety nine. We'll call it. It's three nine so, nine. I recommend nine. it for that price. <laughs> Good. So, Sparking Zero available for some money on many things. I Lots like of it. people have bought I it really already, like it. by the sounds of things, as well. It's outsold uh, fighters by a stupid amount, like ridiculously so. <laughs> <laughs> some people have bought it more than some people who bought fighters. Yeah, in their millions. Um, yes. Talk Diablo to me, Dan. Talk Diablo. Well, I talked a bit of Diablo last week, so I'm not gonna not gonna go too long and hard on this. Good. Um, but Ooh. I have, I have, Ooh. I know, I have sunk some time, some more time into Diablo Four. Most of the yes, honk it, honk it, Coleman. Honk it! <laughs> Honk it! 
Oh, I think he was just on. squeezing his dragon ball. Thank you. There we go. Squeeze it too um, hard, it does this. <laughs> what are you going to do? It's your boy. I try, it makes me shout that at the top of my voice as well. It's all very unprofessional. Anyway, uh, Diablo 4, uh, Vessel yes. of Hatred. Um, I have been seeking more time into that. It is following on, as we spoke last week, from the story of Diablo 4. Um, you are tracking down Nayral, who has the spirit of Mephisto in some kind of uh, crystalline handbag, as far as I can work out. And uh, <laughs> she's trying to do the right thing, uh, but Mephisto is making life difficult for her. Um, so the big gotcha here is the new character class, new area to explore, the new campaign. Um, but there's also some quite cool uplifts to the base game. And I think really those uplifts to the base game, unless you're really, really into playing the latest and greatest of Diablo 4, are probably going to be enough to keep you going. There's been complete revamps to the class system, uh, revamps to the leveling, revamps to the Paragon levels, the end game activities, many of which I think would continue to be available to folks who haven't upgraded to the DLC. But the one thing you are missing out on the DLC is, of course, access to the new Spiritborn character, who is a lot of fun. Very flexible uh, builds to be had if you like your build crafting. Very headache-inducing if you like me and that you've had, got enough to think about in your daily life and looking at more menus and how things operate menus. one another makes your brain cramp. Um, I have a question. Yes. Can a spirit... What was he called? A spirit born? Spiritborn, yes. Can a spirit born throw a spirit ball? Yes. Like Dragon Ball Z. Yes. All right, back to it. Yep, good. Thanks. Thanks, Carman. Um, but one of the real fun things about this new character class, and I touched on this last week, is it really is super flexible. You can really suit it, change the class to suit your personal preference play style rather than you having a play style kind of forced on you by the character itself. So, um, yeah, haven't got too far into the end game yet. I've nearly finished the primary leveling grind. Um, but lots of cool loot. It feels a lot more generous in terms of the fun things it throws at you early in the game. And it looks like they've kind of uh, really embraced the silly overpowered overpowered build uh, when you haven't cranked it up to torment difficulty as yet. One of the things I haven't tried yet, and I really, really, really want to give a go is the kind of the end game co-op activity. I can't remember what it's called, it's called at the moment. But it's like essentially like cooperative raids. Mini raids. Yeah, essentially is what it comes down to. Um, so bug spray. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Other other brands are available. Um, yes. That's meant to be a lot of fun. Haven't had a chance to uh, buddy up with folks yet, but it's kind of like raid light mechanics, solving some puzzles, having to kind of do things in alternate dimensions where the boss exists in order to unlock the damage phase for the people you buddied up with. Uh, looks like a lot of fun, uh, and I will continue to sink time into it, but I uh, just wanted to loop back and say it continues to be fun. However, I think there's still quite a lot of fun to be had just with the upgrades they've done to the game. It uh, yep. doesn't necessarily mean that you have to uh, have to um, buy that in order to enjoy a revitalized Diablo 4 experience. Oh, I have a question, Mr. Dan. Yes. Uh, it looks like the Spiritborn has like access to creatures are you kind of yes summing them in are you like acting as a summoner that brings them in or is it more kind of brave star speed of the puma sort of thing like are they coming in and battling for you or are you just getting their attributes or how does that work well kind of reference. a little bit of column a a little bit of column b so they kind of appear in the game world it isn't just you are now imbued with the power of the centipede go have fun right. um you um are, are the slightly for more fun options like jaguars and gorillas exist rather than yeah, oh you're okay. a really really long insect have uh, <laughs> knock yourself out um they do kind of your ultimate attack does kind of summon them to the battlefield where they'll kind of do their thing they'll kind of either mm -hmm. aggro or deal out loads of poison damage and they're those ultimate abilities certainly in the spirit ball and feel like i've got a lot more uptime than with the other classes which is kind okay. of like a one-off win button whereas with the ultimates in the spirit born it's more about making sure you're deploying that at the right time because they hang about the battlefield for a long time they've got a relatively short cooldown so you can use them a lot more often in your gameplay compared to the other classes where where it really is like a big one-off but yeah no you can you, you do summon them but you also imbue yourself with powers of said uh beastie um, oh, and you can do that in multiple both. ways either by choosing the skills that go along with them 
or you can kind of have a primary and a secondary uh, spirit that you that you have not 2020 and archers uh, for another 90s reference right there um but you can kind of like have like the gorilla um passive ability which basically but kind of uh, gives you kind of extra protection extra health and then you mm -hmm. can have like the the centipede one which kind of imbues your attacks with with poison and stuff like that mm -hmm. so oh, you actually of... have a centipede attack yes, yes. brilliant making that yes up. you can summon a massive <laughs> centipede. did you not see the giant centipedes in the video Carl? Uh, the video is like the size of a postage stamp for me at times because I've okay. got lots of things on my screen that I'm messing right, around fine. with. Um, yeah, also, I mean, you, could you could close the soundboard, Colbin. One yeah, option I mean, you would have. No one That's on it. a different screen. Damn it. <laughs> um, before I forget to plug it as well, a uh, friend of the show and contributor to Big Red Barrel, Mr. Nitwit, uh, did write an article uh, talking about Diablo 4. Not a review this week, uh, just a kind of you know general article. But check that out on BigRedBarrel.com. It's an editorial. Editorial, mm, that's that. the word Edi I was looking for. Go to the new BigRedBarrel.com. There you can read an editorial about if uh, uh, Diablo is taking over someone's life. Probably will. Boo? Why will. boo? Why boo, Sarah? I think that's boo as in hello. Like boo. Oh, no. Not boo. boo. No. It is spooky Doesn't season like after all. Or Diablo, even. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give quick mention to... Oh, sorry. Uh, do, are we done with Diablo? <laughs> uh, we are done with Diablo. Uh, £34 sorry. and the 99 pence is available on PC. Your Xbox Series is, your PlayStation is, 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 is. Uh, it is, the, although the base game is on Game Pass, uh, the expansion tis not, at least oh. certainly not at the moment, but you do get a 10% discount for uh, throwing money at microsoft so okay i've just said that 34.99 that's the price of the expansion isn't it not the yes game. The, the expansion yes. um uh, but does play right nice on the steam deck oh mm -hmm. reet nice reet good Re nice i was very saying good ones. very good good Another simpsons was reference I 90s reference mm -hmm. hey uh, I want what? to give a quick mention to Lunark. Uh, Lunark. I've been playing that this week. Uh, it's not a new game. This came out a year ago, but there's been a uh, Steam sale. It's 50% off at the moment, um, although okay. it's available on uh, on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S and the Nintendo Switch as well. It's 50% off everything at the moment. Uh, this is if you are a fan of the old school style of Another World or yeah, uh, I was getting flashback. Another World flashback vibes from this. More nineties references. Yes, it's uh, one of those kind of games where it's uh, a very it, well, it's platforming, it's shooting, You'll hate and it, it's. <laughs> but this one is more story based than those games. Those games are kind of uh, look, don't tell, and and you've got to kind of piece together what the story is by what's going on around. No one talks. They kind of grunt and make weird noises and stuff. Like this show, they... really. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas this one is, you you are going up, you're talking to people, you're pulling up text boxes and stuff. Um, it, but the, other than that, it's the same kind of mechanics. It's running, it's jumping, it's uh, climbing, shooting, rolling, and that's about it. Uh, I really enjoy this game, although it is quite... I, I, it's easier than those previous games that it's based off of, I think, but it is quite difficult at the same time because... Uh, Flashback I, is rock hard. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, yeah. But this is, uh, this is a game I felt where... Because uh, you're, you, you know, you're the, the chosen one type character. You've oh, got special abilities. You're different from everyone else. It's like, yes, oh, you've got the very rare ability to fall off things and die a lot on my <laughs> I do. I do that. To be fair, anyone who's played Destiny with me knows that gravity is my mortal enemy. So <laughs> Even in space, uh, any... gravity kills me. Anyway, it's uh, 1675 on PC. It is Steam Deck verified. I've been playing it on Geek. And uh, it's 1799 on all the consoles. Uh, but it's 50% deep. off at the moment, like I said. So go get yourself a saving. I recommend it. Nice. Yeah. It's available it on quick, many that's, things. When when you say a quick one, Tim, or just oh, quickly, right, okay. that's a looks quick, like that's it has what it is. too many spiders for your liking. Space spiders, but uh, still. they're pixel spiders. It's fine. <laughs> oh yeah. So, also, so hang on. Uh, so uh, you're fine unless the things that terrify you are of a suitably high resolution. Is that what it comes down to? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Thirty frames per second, or it's fine. Yeah. 
look, when you put me in a VR game and spiders are jumping at my face, I'm going to have a problem. Good. Even though they were very low poly and weird looking. Very Anyway, strange. that's PlayStation I VR. think I, th- I think Tim's confusing resolution and frame rate again as well, but that's uh, a yeah. whole other ramp for yeah. another day. Could be. Could be. Uh, should we talk about some news? Oh, please, let's talk about some news. Because it, it, Dan... It <gasps> might as well be your birthday because you get to talk about Destiny news. Wow. Well, is it? Is it? From Des- Nettie's. Yeah. Is it <laughs> Destiny news? So, this has been long rumored the release of the mobile version of Destiny, uh, which has been, I mean, it's been a bit of an open secret. It's called Destiny Rising. This is probably the unholy, sorry, the unholy uh, spawn of that deal we heard about about 18 24 months ago where um netties gave bungo 100 million dollars to do something with the destiny franchise this is the result red. of <laughs> that um yeah it looks like a destiny thing gacha game i'm not gonna lie um they make it very clear if you've seen the if you've seen the trailer for it and netty's best and they're trying to be all very bun- bungo about it in so far as not only have they done a trailer but they've done tried to do a bungee style vidoc about it um where the long and short of it is that at the right of the front of it they go yeah this is developed by netty's seriously bungee have only just let them use the characters and stuff bungee have got nothing to do with this they're just letting them use destiny assets even more than that, Dan, they went, yes. okay, so this is set in uh, in the world of Destiny. Well, but the, in the a parallel Destiny. universe. In a, exactly. In a parallel, <laughs> in a multiverse, <laughs> Dan. I know. So it has no bearing, I think. And I think probably... So if it fails, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. And the Destiny purist in me is a little bit disappointed because it sounded like they were originally going to try and go for something quite cool, which is like, well... Let's explore what Guardians are, these kind of saviors with these superpowers soon after the collapse of of society, rather than what we see in Destiny 2, where they're kind of like protectors of humanity and all that nonsense. You know, the early mm. days of Guardians, where they were kind of criminal warlords who used their invulnerability for, for nefarious reasons. Could have been an interesting thing to do, but no, they just want to cash in on as many Destiny tropes as you can. Um, really kind of odd choices of characters and location combos that don't make a lot of sense in the Destiny lore. Um, it's a bit of a asset lift and shift. It's going to be both first person and third person, but the big difference compared to um, like main Destiny is that you don't have your own guardian. You have three at, at the outset guardian. three classes. Um, Mm. and the characters are classes. And the way they're trying to sell this is, this is before there was, you know, the established Warlock, Hunter, Titan. Basically, it's like, it's a gacha game, guys. Uh, If you want new characters, you're going to have to give us money um, if you want extra abilities. Because obviously, not in the interest of a gacha-style game if you can unlock and customize your character too much, after all. Um, yeah, the one of the things that I saw theorized up because they've said that you can play this game in first person, like a Destiny game, mm. but you can also play the game in third person. And I think it was who's the Australian guy that everyone likes watching? Uh, Skill up, Skill up. Uh, yeah, I think I saw. I think it was him I was watching. Uh, he said um, the reason that they put it third person is because why buy all these? Co- well, why would you buy, why buy the, the cosmetics, cosmetics if you can't see them? Like yeah. a Destiny, uh, not a Destiny, uh, like a Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, good for them giving it a go. And I suppose, you know, it's going to expose people to the Destiny universe. But I think really this is a play for, because they attempted to do a version of Destiny for the Korean market, I believe, which didn't really get that far. But I think it is a way to, you know, shore up the player base in the massive, massive mobile gaming market that is China. Um. So, yeah, I think it, you know, the whole thing where it's like, yes, uh, it's an alternate universe, I guess. And uh, yeah, uh, we can kind of do what we want. And yeah, they're just licensing us the assets. Wasn't, isn't there like mm. big gaming restrictions in China now? Yes, there are. Yeah. Children, um, mm. which is why like Tencent, Netties, all these kind of companies mm-hmm. are focusing more on American markets. So, yeah, I can't. <laughs> I, I think if people want to play Destiny, they'll play the main Destiny. 
Um, uh, you know, I uh, it's going to work. Yeah, it's going to close down for November the first, but only in North America and Canada because Mm. reasons. Um, I don't know time, baby. Yeah, uh, I have no idea when it's going to come to to other markets, but yeah, it is it is what it is. I think it's it. it I mean, Netties. Let's face it. You know, they're they're the same company you gave us, uh, Diablo Immortal. So hey, you've uh, got a mobile I, phone, right? You You're going to love this I, Destiny game. I enjoyed that for a couple of days, and then it just got really just too much. That's not what they were. <laughs> yeah. More importantly, Dan, have they stuck? All of the story on a completely entirely separate website. No, I think because it's an alternate universe, there is no story. Okay, fine. That's go on better. I think I think it's just complete quest get shiny. <laughs> um, although to to really drive home the the FOMO that is central to games such as as this developed by Netties, you know there was like rarities of loot. There's now one above exotic, so uh, you've got that to chase. And I'd imagine that's probably going to be very premium hard to get. currency. Yaha. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. So I have a question, Dan. Yes, as our resident uh, resident Destiny boy. Yes, Doctor Doctor Destiny Dan. Uh, yep. Will uh-huh. you be giving this a try? Mm, for academic interest, just to say I've done it. I don't think I'm going to be sinking a lot of time into it, but I'll give it a go. I mean, I've I've only played about God three hour three hours of Destiny. You're in the past still going to you're going to dust off your razor kishi. Plug it into your iPhone. I, I sold my Razer Kishi, actually. What? Oh. I've still got mine. I haven't touched it in a long See, time. There we go. <laughs> I saw its value was plummeting. I was like, better sell it. Um, I mean, that's probably. I'm trying to move house at the moment. So I'm in a, in a genuine, some old gadget related crap. That's funny. Drive yeah, I mean, you can you you can pair an Xbox or a PlayStation controller mm. to your phone and play this. It does support that. Um, yeah. So that option is available. But uh, if, I'll, if, I'll you, give it if a try. you watch the trailer, it's a little bit too earnest. Like, hey, guys, we really care about this. We really care. Okay, we really care about the universe. Have, you told, have we told you how much we care? Buy our stuff, please. Um, Here's my problem with these games, uh, yes. because I like the idea of having a mobile game. Your mobile is much more convenient to carry around than the Steam Deck, although I yep. do carry around my Steam Deck a lot. Um, I want to play these games on my commute. Yeah. And... No. Every single I, I I'm pretty sure every mobile game needs you to be online because every one that I've ever tried to play needs you to be online. Yes. Uh, if it's single player or not, because they don't like piracy pirates. and stuff. Yeah. Arr. Um the problem what I have with trying to play a mobile game on my commute is I live in London. I go underground on my commute and lose all my internet. <laughs> so, so this I, is one I, I like the idea 5G of 5G in there so everyone can talk on their phones and but I, 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 I like call the me a idea grumpy of old man. Of I don't like it. First person shooter. I don't know. I was going to say, I'm with you, Tim. Can't. Call me a grumpy old man. I quite like the fact people aren't nattering away yeah. on the bloody chip. Yeah. The I don't guy sat next I, to me, really loud conversation the I other like, day. And we went yeah. into a tunnel. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, no, no, well, I, no, no <laughs> well, I live in Slough. Doesn't count as civilization. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. I live in the trapped in the da- dungeon that is my own brain. Uh, anyway, that's uh, Destiny. Wow, what we called it that, Destiny, that, Destiny Rising, Rising. Revengeance, Electric <laughs> Boogaloo. Looking forward to it as we all are. I yep. am sure. Let's talk about Pokemon. Kind oh, of. Oh, they had a big old leaky leak. Yeah, oh. Game Freak, developers of Pokemon and other things like Tembo, the bad tempered elephant, or whatever it was called. Uh, and, and the mostly, single largest employer of uh, lawyers in Japan, uh, Game Freak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mostly through Nintendo. Uh, but yep. yes, Game Freak, uh, they got they they got hit with a massive hack. Uh, apparently, a few months ago, they've only just kind of owned up to it. And uh, this is this is making news for a few different reasons. Uh, there's information, or well, if if the information that has been leaked out to the internet is to be believed there is info on uh pokemon titles that are yet to come out there is source code on existing titles there is uh information about projects that have been cancelled or are are to come out yet and uh there is information on the nintendo switch too however the real reason why it's a bit sucky that they didn't announce that the there was an actual hack until it got leaked out a couple of months later uh, mm-hmm. by Bloomberg is that uh, there is a case where um, I think 
I'm trying to find out how many they said, but uh, two thousand six hundred and six. Two. It says in- that's it. Two thousand six hundred and six cases of current and former uh, contract and employee names and email addresses were accessed. Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. This kind of thing is more common than you think, though. The company I work for, they had their entire payroll hacked. Oh. Yeah, I was about I was about to say something that was confidential that, I, <laughs> but I, I saw something re- similar recently. Uh, yeah, and like to the point where they had to give everyone uh, a year of Experian identity protection. Oh, um, nice. So yeah, these things do do happen, and it's it you know they are high value data resources for because you know if you lift employee records, there's all kinds of stuff. There's names, addresses might be you know copies of identity cards stuff like that so it's depressing that we live in the world that we do um yeah. but yeah i i think what's interesting is the difference in the cultural approaches to how this is reported i think in the west it's pretty much accepted that you've just got to stick your hand up and go guys this has happened with our whole yeah. the horses bolted but we're with you to try and sort it out whereas i think in in japan it's kind of they don't Want to admit to the shame of this happening, and it's uh, yeah, I'm with you. I think it's it happened all the way back in August, and it's like really, you're only just saying this now. This is really bad. This, you know, you're not giving yeah, people it, the opportunity to protect. It's themselves. the PlayStation hack all over again. Yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> was this Pal World <laughs> or the or the developers? Yeah, part? it's it was revenge. That's why they, yeah. that's why they came out. Uh, that's why Nintendo's jumped on with the lawyers because they're like right. <laughs> Wanted to get Tip access to more of your monster designs. <laughs> MFers. Yeah. Uh, right, here's some info that has been leaked out anyway. Um, again, this the, Game Freak has only confirmed that uh, employees and contractors' information got out. They didn't confirm any of the Nintendo stuff because, you know, you want to cover that up anyway. Yeah. Uh, but if it is to be believed, then the next generation of uh, Nintendo console uh, reportedly has the code name Ounce. Uh, the unannounced 10th generation of Pokemon game is reportedly called Gaia. Uh, but again, these are all working titles. Yeah, Cody. And uh, the unannounced Pokemon Legends ZA uh, was Ikaku. Uh, there was also information yeah, on an unannounced, <laughs> an unannounced Ooh, live action Pokemon uh, uh, either show or film coming to Netflix. Uh, also, the unreleased sequel to 2019's Detective Pikachu, mm-hmm. which was uh, meant to be called The Great Detective Pikachu, and was going to be reportedly directed by Jordan Vaught Roberts, who is uh, he's the director behind The Kings of Summer and Kung Skull, I- uh, Kong Skull Island, which right. I think that would have been good because I like he does action good. Yeah, that would have been fun. Action. I, I like him to do Detective action Pikachu. good. Too. He done yeah, action, action good. Him done action good. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I quite liked Detective Pikachu for the yeah, real-life Pokemon. Fun. I would have really liked the sequel. Unfortunately, Warners have had some issues behind the scenes no. with money. No. So, as as has been quite highly reported in the uh, over over the last year or yes. so. Uh, yeah, I don't think they recently releases are going to help them either. Uh, also, existing games uh, like Pokemon Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, Black Two, and White Two, which were all DS titles. Uh, mm-hmm. Their entire source code were leaked online oh. as well, uh, which has resulted in stolen, unused Pokemon assets and uh, game music emerging online. <laughs> oh. In unrelated news, and, Power World uh, has some uh, new uh, DLC Power World coming. Just, <laughs> yeah. Power <World's, laughs> pa- the developers of Power World have just hired 2,606 people, formerly from, <laughs> from Game Freak, and have a brand new set of assets, including exciting new music in their game. <laughs> Yeah, Allegedly. now now when you pull out your Glock and put it up against the temple of a uh, legally different Pikachu, it goes. <laughs> 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 yeah, Pikachu. Anyway, moving on. Please. Um, so we spoke about the success of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero earlier. We did, which, of course. That is from Bandai Namco. But before the news of uh, how well that was selling. Bandai Namco have had reportedly one of its worst years in a very long time, uh, uh, which is resulting in staff being uh, let go. But also, well, apparently it's quite difficult to uh, get. I was originally going to do a joke well. on Konami. We're up to some shady stuff and then go, oh, no way, it's Bandai Namco. 
Uh, but apparently this is quite common in Japan. Um, it's quite hard to sack people when you don't have a reason to sack people. So, uh, and business not doing good is not a reason. So yes. what they tend to do is uh, either give them menial tasks or send them to, uh, in this case, expulsion rooms uh, where they have nothing to do because their projects were cancelled in the hope that they'll just get bored and go away or feel great <laughs> shame and go away. Yep. It's very true. This is uh, quite... Not well, it's not uncommon practice, yeah. It's Japan. called uh Odashi Baya, the expulsion rooms, uh, the, the practice of using expulsion oh. rooms, apparently. Uh, but yeah, uh, so apparently, there's 200 of its uh, 1,300 employees have been moved to expulsion rooms, and uh, 100 have resigned. Oof, so yeah, I mean, do you still get paid your salary? Not I believe so. I mean, it's like gardening leave where you boring. don't get to go outside. I mean, I've I've worked with some people. I can imagine go. You, I mean, I get to go sit in a room and not do anything all day until I get to clock out. Great, let's do that. I'll. Uh, I mean, grab my, I'd, I'd go my Nintendo Switch, or I'll bring a book, or I'll listen to some yeah. podcasts. But I, I can imagine this case like you just get put in a room, no windows, uh, sit at a desk, and then you you pull out your phone. They go, no phones, security protocol. <laughs> you just sit there. Like those crazy people on TikToks on flights that don't watch movies, just oh. sit there waiting for it to be over. Uh, is that the face they pull, Calm that one? Yeah. Like that. Look like they're like crimping out, flight. Exactly. Crimping Eight out hours. particularly difficult poo. Yeah. It's not great. Uh, but again, this no. is stuff we've heard of before. Uh, last time it was Konami reportedly doing this to Hideo Kojima, where they, they were making them like uh, clean toilets and, and work in... Uh, their their weird gyms and oh. stuff like that, yeah. Dis disinfect the CEO sex swing stuff stuff like that. No, that's that's two K, Dan. That's two K. Oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> my bad. Got all. I thought they had a Japan studio. Sorry, I'm getting my, <laughs> getting used. Oh. Oh, oh, Bobby Cote. No, it's not Bobby oh, Cote. Oh, who is no, it? No. Who's the no, well, that oh. dude? That that dude. Oh, that dude looks like he you loves always it. forget Randy Pitchford's Rant name. Swing. No, it's a, Randy Pitchford's son, you bring us great shame. Yep. <laughs> In medieval times, specifically. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all the news we've got time for this week. Uh, we is. will leave it there. No news on the uh, Xbox stream, because it's literally happening as we're talking. But mm -hmm. why would you want to watch a stream of Xbox when you could watch a stream of Big Red Barrel UK talking about stuff? And then you could mm. go back and watch the high quality trailers instead of the streamed ones from that's a Xbox good point. after the show. Hey, yeah, that sounds like a win win. A win win that win is win a win, win win. A win win. Yeah, I rarely I rarely watch live streams live anymore because I like so to watch, just the watch high streams. quality versions. Yeah, I uh, just in the river. Just on the Thames. Do you, do you, just look uh, at streams just on the Thames. Look, look at look at the shopping trolleys float by. Ah, that's a good stream. Mm. <laughs> I like to make a wish upon the syringe needles that go past. Uh, exactly, <laughs> trying to identify what what the what the food that created that poo was, for example. Oh my god! Look at the state of that swan. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty syringes sticking out of its neck, <laughs> and a trolley. Why not? What well, well, a trolley sticking out of its neck as well. Well, yeah. no, he's got giant beefy arms because of all the drugs. Right, so, <laughs> so he's, drugs. he's a fully roided so he's pushing up swan, a trolley pow powerlifting in the a trolley as he, as he swims along. All right, Brown okay. swan, of course. <laughs> grabbing people, try <laughs> grabbing people, trying to walk along the cycle track. Ah, doing a trolley! Do you know what his favourite food is? Mad grains is what it is. Mad, Mad grains, grains, yo. Yeah. Absolute unit. Thank you. In awe of Thank the you. size of the lad. Thank you. They're the king's favourite. <laughs> Welcome to five years ago. Ones. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. he, love, he loves he loves drugged up swans. swans as the king. No, he can. No. He can eat swans. We can't. Yeah. Us proles can't. He can. Talking about jacked up swans and That's shopping trolleys. Apparently, my he face. doesn't own all the swans. <laughs> doesn't who own doesn't the swans. own all the swans? No, apparently, I think it's the ones on the Thames or some something. There's some limitation to that. It's not all swans in the UK. Are you got to make yeah. me bloody live fact check this. Did we um? Did we not lose that with the Queen? Like when when old Liz pops her clogs, does that not mean the swans are free and we can eat them as we please now? No. Okay, so okay. the the king, genuinely been wearing, yeah. wearing this for a while now. The king does not own all the swans in the United yeah. Kingdom, but he does have the ah. right to claim ownership of some of them. So you go ah, forsooth, Verity, I claim this swan in the name of King Charles the Third. It is mine. <laughs> Don't drop a Vesuv feirally. Sorry. Oh, uh, while I'm drinking. <laughs> yeah. Mute swans. 
Uh, you can have them. Uh, but he, uh, King Charles only claims swans in the River Thames in its tributaries. So uh, <laughs> I'd like to see this one around the car. That one's mine. That one's mine. <laughs> uh, that that one's one. Mine. Don't like looking uh, at that. That one. He's that, that, that one. <laughs> Too much <laughs> shopping <laughs> trolley on that one. Um, <laughs> the Never mind the one. up one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute unit. That's bloody hell. <laughs> Does he own swan lighters and, and Rizzler papers? And swan no, he doesn't, uh, he, do, he doesn't uh, own those. He doesn't own, uh, okay. own those, no. Sorry. That's got two ends. Those are mine. Is that is that why like smokers tend to lose their lighters all the time? Because King Charles yeah, is standing up and nicking hey, 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 have you got have you got a light? Have you got a light? That's mine, you brawl. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Turns up at night when you're sleeping. He <laughs> you does. Yeah. Hello. Swan <laughs> <that. laughs> King Charles. Give me that, that one. Says Clipper. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't care. Give it back. Mine. <laughs> Give me that bloody lighter. I'm right there. <laughs> One is smoking a doobie. What? <laughs> do we have um? Do, wow. Do we have uh? Do we have our royal stamp of approval on our merch yet? Of course no. we do. Excellent. Let's talk about it. Put a swan on it. It will claim it. Go, I very forsooth. I'm King Charles III, and I demand a shirt with this man's face impersonating a swan. <laughs> Tpublic.com slash store slash brb. This is something decreasingly like the king, more like. John Cleese with every passing minute. <laughs> I, I, I was I was getting more uh, Boris out of that. We Jesus, I don't yeah. know where it oh. went. I'm just going to speak normally. By my face. Bye, thank you. Snap me right back in it. Uh, <laughs> by my face. Things with my face are available <laughs> at tpublic.com slash store slash BRB. T-shirts, they've got my face. Baby gross, they've got my face. Mugs, they've got my mug. Face masks, they've got my face, confusingly enough. tpublic.com slash door slash BRB. There are some other ones available <laughs> that actually are of superior artistic value, but they aren't the ones with my face on. tpublic. There we go. More 90s references. Thank you. tpublic.com slash door slash BRB. The eternal the eternal whirling pit of souls. That has my face in it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, tpublic.com slash store slash brb go there and buy things that has Dan's face on and also things that does not have Dan's face on we yeah. have lots of stuff all of the things I like the Sonic t-shirt that doesn't have my face on it though yeah that's just a recommendation that's not actually one of our designs but you know I got um, I got very uh, confused last week she told me about the sale Tim and then I t- spoke about it on the show and then I went over to the store and it went this sale's over in two hours I went well that made me look stupid but then when it hit two hours it goes this is now three days or something like that yeah. so I don't know what was going on with their website but their counter was all skew with I think the sale's over now <laughs> Daniel meant to say something about Tuesdays Tuesday hey. sorry Before I got distracted that, by, and, I got distracted well, looking up swan based Good. Out of order, then. It's not only birds you can claim ownership of. I think you can also claim any swan appliances in your house. So, you know, if the, if the king's coming around, you know, lock up your carpet washer, as far as I can work out, because you go, oh, bloody heavy net. That, that is do. consumer advice you will not get on any other show. And that is the value we add to you, dear listeners. <laughs> You're not going to get that kind of advice anywhere else, for very good reason, but we'll give it to you anyway. <laughs> Uh, Tuesday, Tim. Uh, Tuesday. Apologies for being d- d- distracted. Tuesday is a Tuesday. You yes, should let is. us know what is happening on top of tables on a Tuesday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Each and every Tuesday, we do an event called Tabletop Tuesday at the Loading Bar in Stoke Newington. Uh, this Tuesday, we have a feature game. And if you play that feature game, you have a chance of winning a copy of the game at the end of the evening. Blended. This week's feature game, slightly unimaginatively titled, but looks fun. It's a game called Hook and Ring Game. It looks fun. It should be good. Uh, I have it... a question. Yes. Do I have to hook rings? Basically, yes. Oh, okay. I have a question. Yes. Have you? Are you going full carny and you've completely rigged this game so no one can win it? Yes. I have another. Okay. Someone is going to call shenanigans. I have another question. Yep. You are still totally cool with people coming up to you in the bar, stroking your thigh and going, No, never been cool here. with that, Dan. You just said that, oh, even though it's a lie and it is not cool. Um, but yeah, if you want more information about Tabletop Tuesday, don't listen to Dan. Do come along to bigredbarrel.com and you can check out more information from the panel on the right-hand side of the site. Uh, you can also join the... One uh, two thousand one hundred and ninety members of our meetup group. Uh, 
nearly at 2,200 people. We've been going there for some time. But, That's uh, our numbers yeah. work. Well done. Search for Tabletop Tuesdays on meetup.com for more details. Uh, that reminds me that I forgot to do the post today, so I have to do that tomorrow. But hopefully by the time you hear this podcast, when you're not listening to it live, uh, there will be more information in those places. Otherwise, just come along to Tabletop Tuesday at the Loading Bar in Stoke Newington. Also, before we posts. move on totally, even though I put it on the agenda before this, I will do the thing that I said at the top of the show that I was going to do, uh, which is uh, something I'd like to add as a shout out section generally going forward. Um, no. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> Nitwit, who is uh, listening to the show, kindly moved the recording time of his podcast so that he can actually be an audience member of ours. Uh, but oh. you should go check out his podcast, uh, a thing called Glitch Report. I've put a thing, a link in the show notes. So hopefully Coleman will add that to the post. But go check out Glitch Report oh. uh, on Spotify and other places you can get podcasts. Uh, and yeah, you should be able to listen to that there. That is Nitwit's podcast. So just he has a terribly out. fragile ego. You should go there and massage it so it grows into a beautiful, beautiful swan that the king will <laughs> I'll go steal one further. and eat. I listened to the Glitch Report on Spotify, which Ooh. means I had to install Spotify because I don't use Spotify oh. and it will not show up on Podcast Addict for some reason. So there's oh. your homework, Glitch. There's your homework, Nitwit. Get that on Podcast Addicts, please. That's my podcast player. Okay. Thank you. Or just send me the RSS feed and I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we did Tabletop Tuesday. <laughs> oh, there we go. If you've enjoyed this show. I didn't. What's wrong with you? Um, but if you've enjoyed the show, thank you for listening. We love your face. I had to listen. I had no choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can go to the brand new BigRedBarrel.com. It's new. It's improved. It's actually red, unlike the old site. And uh, you can go there and you can uh, look at our articles. You can look at the trailers and all the stuff we put up. But you can also listen to the podcast. You can ask us questions. We've got, we've got comments on there. But we've also got links to our social media accounts. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter and Threads and X. No, wait. Twitter is X. I'm mixing the things up again. But you can get us all on those. We're at Big Red Barrel. Uh, we're also on Twitch at Big Red Barrel. We're also on YouTube at Big Red Barrel TV. And uh, you can find us on Discord. We have yeah. a Discord link available on BigRedBarrel.com. It's also in the uh, show notes of this here episode. Uh, or Dan likes to read it out uh, completely as as uh, God intended. Or someone Discord. else with a higher power. Discord.com slash invite slash to have work. You'll probably need the link, or you'll probably need to type it out, because that's... Mm, that's to to <laughs> uh, anyway, we have some questions, because you can go right. and you can ask us questions, and we'll read them here on this here show. Uh, first of all, Pensive Games on Discord says, Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? The answer I make is... My, I have underpants made of bird seed. Next question. <laughs> okay. Uh, she also says, Because it became a bird hellscape every time. Um, oh, I don't understand birds. something to do with the birds or that other film that was really bad with the birds that I've forgotten the name of it. Oh Christ, more birds. The sequel uh, that's to the, the one. Birds. The birds. <laughs> that's the one. The swans. Is, is that the, the one you think of? The bloody heavy. Yes. <laughs> that's why the birds suddenly appear, because of all our drugs that the swans are trying to take from us. <laughs> all our all our disused syringes littered around the place. If my employer's listening, that's, this is a joke. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Next time, say Also on feeling. Discord. Also on Discord. It said, he oh, says, question. <clears throat> what are your <laughs> thoughts on the three demo for Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven, which lets you play the beginning of the game and carry your save over when the full game launches on October the 24th? It's available on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Steam, you know. Really? It's almost like that chap works for Square Enix. <laughs> you would Does think that so. count as a free advert? Do we have to label that somehow? I don't know. I, he's going to get the, the BRB rub where he sell, sells at least one extra copy because of us. <laughs> that happened last time. Uh, yes, I think, I think that's great. That's my thoughts of Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven. That I hope it's better stiffy. than Romancing Saga 1 Revenge of the Six. <laughs> and I'm sure it is. I'm sure good. you're not right. Good, 
good quality gaming. Uh, also, turning on Facebook, not a question. Uh, I just thought this was weird. I don't so think I any of them are being questioned, mm-hmm. actually. The first one was I know, a statement. They're not, they're not a really questions question. for... Yeah, that, yeah, 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 more like that. Um, can we have actual questions for the future, please? That'd be nice. Uh, Danny on Facebook said, My time with all you guys feels like a whole other life. All You're attempts welcome. at inventing a time machine have left me sterile. Oh. I don't know what's going on there, but okay. It, it seemed weird enough to put into the show. Okay. I there may slapped, well be the Danny that designed the Big Red Barrel logo. Oh, it might be, actually. Oh, okay. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Not sure, but oh. maybe. Because that was designed by a Why Danny. Why don't you look on Facebook and tell me? Okay. Yeah. I don't do Facebook. I don't do no, Facebook. No, neither does Tim. <laughs> I only do Facebook because of the page, because no one else will do Facebook. So they I don't do Facebook. Page. I don't do yeah. Facebook. I have no. Uh, my <laughs> face, my face, <laughs> my face <laughs> does t shirts, not books. Thank we get a lot much. of link clicks from Facebook <laughs> while we're still on it. Good. Good. Can we yeah. go now, please? Sure. Uh, if you could review our podcast, that'd be great. Uh, we It comes back to us. We can read it. Um, it'd be great if you could put a five star. Even if you hate the podcast, just put a five star and then put something nasty yeah. in the comments. That's yeah. fine. It, it's all about the algorithm, I mean, it's baby. free. It's the least you could do for an hour's free entertainment, even if it was terrible entertainment. I mean, yes. if you can't uh, make it to the loading bar in Stoke Newington, stroke Tim's leg and lovingly mm. look him in the eye and go, No. Stop. Don't don't do that. Ooh, yeah. Don't yeah. just yeah. come and play Everywhere a game and win it like Tuesday a normal human being. The bar, play in the tabletop game. Play in the car game. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tabletop games stacked high to the ceiling. Everywhere I go. Tim loves it. No. Yeah. But remember, yeah. you must maintain eye contact with him as you say all those things. Awesome. Um, no. Speak. Speaking of the algorithm, I just wanted to quickly say while we were uh, earlier we were talking about Big Red Barrel TV over on uh, YouTube, uh, if you uh, are listening to the show and you, uh, you you fancy watching us on the YouTubes, then you can see us there. We do the live streams on YouTube. We do the live streams on Twitter. Uh, sorry, on Twitter, on Twitch, as we're doing now, and uh, also the like fully edited, sounding much better version goes on yeah. YouTube when we're done as well. Uh, I try to put it out at the same time as the audio version. It goes out the same day at least. Um, but if you if you are doing that, a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel. I'll let you know when the uh, live streams are going out. All that stuff. That'd be great. That's a good way to make us get noticed. That'd be nice. I really, make do, us happy. I really say that. Or happier. makes us very happy. Makes Tim happy in his pants. It mm-hmm. does. In, mm-hmm. in ways I've seen you can it. experience in person. No. That makes a noise bar in Stoke New. Like this. Does so twice. One for each. Oh. Yeah. And when he's talking I about... Bit, in my tailpipe. And when he's talking about his big D, he's not talking about a D20. Let's tell you that. All right? That's a little no, he's tree he has for Natural D. He's talking about... When Dan's talking about his big D, he's talking about... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forgot to use that earlier. Yep. Right. Yeah. We are... Let's go. Go, we are going to go. We've had enough of talking to each other, which means end of the show for you who are listening. So uh, thank you for tuning in. We will be back next week in some shape or form. Uh, thank you for joining us. For those of you who are live, thank you for listening to us, those who are not. And all that really remains is for me to remind you that I have been Dan. I might have been Tim. I've been an anime character that was named after food. That's most of the Kira Toriyama. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm re- yeah. You landed it. Well, that was a great joke. You landed it. Congratulations. My character's lovely. named after a carrot. What? Kakarot. Right. Yeah. We yeah. are going. Thank you <laughs> for joining us. We'll be back next week. And until next time, dear listeners, toodle bye. are quite welcome for the podcasting goodness that you just heard. Why not roll on over to BigRedBarrel.com for more podcasts, news, reviews, and videos from the biggest, reddest site on the internet, BigRedBarrel.com. He's Gilmore. He seems to very much care about being in charge of Ubisoft.
and not much yeah. else. Uh, not yeah. the not the games, not the quality of the games, not the licenses that they're using. Definitely not the workers. So if you do 